Good morning. morning. It's good to see each other this morning. We're glad to have some people on this side of the church today. I don't have to stand over here during the sermon now and keep it level. Glad to have our professional candle lighters back today. Went so smooth this morning. And actually put candles in there. That's right. Yeah. That's a good trick, isn't it? Hope y'all had a wonderful anniversary. We missed all of you that were out last week for either a with family or wherever you was at, we missed you. I'm glad we had the ones we had here. Uh, do we have any announcements uh, for our church today we need to lift up? Yes, we are going to Rose Garden Tuesday. We'll go shopping in the morning. She has four men and four women now. So, and she said she certainly appreciated us coming in. So what time will y'all be there for? We leave here at 1. Get there about 1.30. 1.30 in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be asleep. You said, you said morning. I thought 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> 1 p.m. Okay. Thank y'all for doing that. Anyone else? I'll be gone this next week, and uh, I'm going to be at uh, uh, Jacksonville, is that right, Tammy? Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we're going to be in a mission trip for the youth over at Browns, and somehow I got drafted uh, uh, on that trip, and I hope I can survive. I haven't been on one of those in a long time, but I'm going as a chaperone, and uh, so pray for us. There's, uh, we'll have a bus full. I think I've got six boys I'm responsible for, so... There may be four come back, but I'll, I have to start out with six. They're already trying to fill me out and see what the, you know, Brother Steve will let them get away with. I said, nothing. I don't let you get away with nothing. But they are excited. It's a good group of kids wanting to go, and they're going to be doing some special things and uh, help doing some construction work type stuff and help those that are less fortunate. So be praying for us to do that. Anyone else have an answer? Appreciate that. Anytime someone does something extra like that, we appreciate it very much. I'll try to get you a longer scripture to read next time you have to read. Please do. It's only 21 verses. I mean, you know, it's not too bad. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, there is a gospel singing now. It's an artist from uh, Nashville. And I think it's at 7 o'clock. I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I can look and check on that. But I know that they've got a singing tonight. They're trying to do something special at East Trinity. So if you get a chance to go by there, I know they'd appreciate it. I'll be in Revival also this week. I'll be uh, preaching at uh, Center Ridge in Lexington. I'll start tonight and go through Wednesday night. So keep me in your prayers. It'll be 7 o'clock each night. They were going to have a meal tonight. They canceled that. They said they forgot who was coming and they just couldn't afford to feed me. So they're actually, today's their homecoming. So they're going to be eating all day. Um, and I said, that's fine because I don't have to eat the preach. So anyone else? But please keep us in your prayers. Uh, first hymn is number 898. I'm, I'm sorry, 697. You told me that. I just put this. 697. 
and those are A1 bikes to stand, number 697. Let's begin our worship together. <laughs> standing, let us join together in our traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. That's time for our scripture reading. The scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. All of it. I will thee, my God. And I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. God, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of their righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee. And thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfieth the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is not unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all of them that love him, but all the wicked will be destroyed. 
My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. You passed the test to read today. We thank you for that. I want you to read the whole thing because I want you to get the whole story of that Psalms and how wonderful it is to think about all that God is doing for us in our lives. So thank you, Pam. Um, I'm going to ask the ushers come now to receive our morning offering. Dear God, we thank you for this day you bless us with. We thank you for the many things you've blessed us with our lives. We pray now, dear God, as we take this moment to remember and worship you through our tithes and offerings. We thank you, dear God, for the blessings of, of the finances and all the things that are around us, Lord, to keep us going each day. And Lord, remind that all is yours, and as you've given us this portion, we give a portion back to you for your kingdom, for your glory, for the work of the church. Now bless the gift and the giver in the name of Christ. Concerns this morning. Anyone? Family. Certainly messed up that family and their loss. Anyone else? My wife reminded me that the singing for tonight is at six o'clock at East Trinity. So if you'd like to go. It's a uh, no charge. They'll probably take a love offering for the, the guests that's coming, but if you want to go uh, hear him. He's, a, he's actually a country music artist that does gospel. I don't know exactly is who he is. Is his name Stephen Woodson? Is that who it is? I didn't ask that. Okay, sorry. No. Could be. That's my second cousin. All right. Well, maybe your cousin's going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, they're only allowed to sit. All the other things people are not really going to do. Sorry. Ann and Hank Evans. I'm sorry, what? Ann and Hank Evans. Okay. How's your grandmother? She's still about the same. Thank you for asking. Mary Howe and who? Howe. Mary Howe. Granddaughter is a little. Got a wreck right down here. Okay, mm. <laughs> anyone else? She's in Germany, is that right? Yes. She's like, oh, come back talking funny. <laughs> Anyone else? My son's 
sudden I was living for Africa Thursday for three weeks with the Asian. Is that a joy or concern? Is that a joy or concern? <laughs> His name is Austin uh, Vandeboort. Uh, he's, I think he's got a little German name in him too, but uh, he's a good son-in-law, he really is. He's in the, he's in the Navy Reserves and he's going to be going to Cuba before many months. So he's going to Africa now. What did you say he was going for? He's going to Africa for three weeks or oh. something to be a liaison in between okay. the government and the Marines and then uh, he's going to Cuba in October. Some of you, I've never told you this story, but uh, Austin was, uh, he was in Africa with his father and mother. They were missionaries to Africa. And uh, while they were there, uh, the reason they left is because it was during the middle of all the apartheid fighting and all that was going on. And, and they come in to rob Austin's family and shot the guy that was helping with them, shot him point blank in front of the kids. And, and so I'm sure Austin still thinks about that and he goes back to Africa, so pray for him. But they, they were missionaries there for years when they was growing up. Anyone else? Pray for the ones that take care of the disabled. They, like at Todd's home, there's so many homes like this. And these people give so much love. Just a lot of these adults and children don't have any family. Amen. Certainly prayer we need to lift up. Anyone else? Okay. Please keep us this week in your prayers. Again, as I say, as we travel and also in revival. Um, about joys. Do you have any joys this morning? Y'all are so happy. I want to be here. Amen. That's a joy. be thankful for. We may not always lift it up, but it is a, uh, when you're at peace, it's easier to just sit back and say, well, things are good, because it is, you know, we're so thankful for that. And God is good to all of us all the time. If there's no one else, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we just come before your throne of mercy with great thanksgiving. You have blessed us in so many ways, and we need to stop and pause and thank you again for another day. We thank you, dear God, for this uh, past week that you have been with us through many things. We pray to your God for our friends, family who lost a loved one this last week. We pray to your God that you would be with, with his wife and all those that are left behind. We pray for those, Lord, that are on our prayer list today, each and every one of them. We lift up our joys of thanksgiving and gratefulness. And we ask, dear God, that you continue to be with our nation, our leaders, as we go forth. And dear God, we ask that you would be in the hearts of those that are our enemies, that they may become our friends. And now, dear God, as we pray together and as we call upon you, we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn, is that 140? 140 is our next hymn. You may be seated on this one, number 140.
Thank you, Miss Nancy. This morning I'll be reading from Romans. So Bible I've got is about to fall apart. I'm going to have to give it up, I think. Romans 7, 15. Romans 7, 15, reading through the 25th verse. Let us hear God's word. For that which I do, I allow not. For that which I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I can sin into the law that is good. Now then it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is to present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that that I would not, it is no more than I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that which I would do, evil, do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, wherein against the law of my mind, and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in its members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with, then with the mind that I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh of the law of sin. This is the word of God for the people of God. It's a lot of tongue tangling there in those words, but it's basically saying I, that that I know I shouldn't do, I still do it. And that that I, I want to do, I seem not to do. And so I find myself uh, uh, bound and chained by sin. And he asks the question, says, who will release us from this bondage? And that is Jesus Christ. Um, you know, growing up, you're taught, don't do this, don't do that. You know, stay away from this, stay away from that. And, uh, and some of the things we're told all of our life, we get older and we say, why do they tell us to stay away from that? There's nothing wrong with that. And other times we'll say, I wish they'd have said something because I wouldn't have been in part of that. I wish I'd have, you know, how many times when you got a certain age in your life, said, I wish my parents had told me this was going to happen during this time of my life when your body starts hurting a certain way or you can't walk like you used to. And, and you say, why didn't they tell me about these things? Well, when we start to learn as kids, uh, I remember some of the things that we were taught uh, as we were growing up around the farm. And there were certain things we could eat. You know, you can have these huckleberries or whatever. Y'all you know, ever heard of huckleberries? Y'all have, right? Okay. I had, uh, when I was at East Trinity, I had people who never heard of huckleberries. They said, there ain't no such thing. I said, yes, there is huckleberries. I said, we used to pick them when we was out uh, hauling wood. We'd see them on the side of the little, uh, the logging road and we'd eat them. And I said, uh, and they were, they were okay, it was kind of gritty, but they was okay. And I said, uh, we used to have musky dimes, we knew what those were, we'd have those. You don't see those much anymore, do you? They're, they've, I think they've made too many reefs out of them or something, you don't see many of those. And, um, and then there were some things you, didn't, you shouldn't eat, but you were told sometimes to do it out of meanness, like uh, persimmons. Have you ever had persimmons, you know? Uh, I remember... Uh, we was told, said, don't eat the plums on the back trees. We had some little plum trees behind Dad's land. Said, don't, our granddad's house. He said, don't eat those plums because until they get a certain thing because they're, uh, uh, they're green and they'll hurt your stomach, you know. And we'd say, okay. And we'd wait as long as we could. And then we'd see just a little red on there. We'd get one of them. Because we knew that the birds or our cousins who had come in from up north would get them before we did. And so we'd eat one. And guess what? That night we'd say, granddad, my stomach's hurting. What'd you do? I ate too many of them plums. Well, them plums wasn't right. I told you, but I wanted them so bad. Just like he's talking about here. But I, but I really felt like I need those. 
And then there was those persimmons in the backyard. And Granddad had just a little bitty mean streak in him, just a little bit. And he would say, uh, boys, now y'all don't need to eat them persimmons, says, because you got to be a real man to eat them persimmons. Because they, you know, you got to be tough because they eat those. And of course, Granddad would get us to get one. And I learned as I got older which ones not to eat, but they wait till they got really ripe. And they were pretty good when they got really ripe. There'd always be one little spot there that would be a little bit, uh, uh, make you pucker up. But I remember us kids, we'd grab those and says, I'm just a man, you know, he's eight or nine years old. I'm just as much a man as they are, so I'm going to eat one. Sure enough, you'd pop one in the mouth and you just felt like you just puckered up. And you just looked, it was terrible. Uh, and of course, the granddad would have a big laugh about that. In our desires of flesh, we want things, don't we? We desire things. We, we, no matter how bad we say, I, I can't, I don't need to do that, we still do it. I mean, I'm, I'm the world's worst about diets. I'm still trying to diet. But I still find myself, you know, when I go to the grocery store uh, this morning to get something to snack on on the way down here to church, uh, I could have got a granola bar. What did I do? They had really nice blueberry pies sitting there. And they were just right. They fit my hand. I could eat them and I was did not make a mess. And, and, you know, and it's just amazing how my mind says to me, you know that you don't need those things. But then I say, well, one won't hurt. The problem is one becomes two and two becomes three and before you know it you've bought out the whole countertop. But in our hearts we know what we should really do. And we have that conscience, I call it, that God, the Holy Spirit is telling us, uh, don't do this. But our flesh is saying, what will it hurt? Just one time what will it hurt? And then we find ourselves later saying, man, I'm so miserable because I wish I had done what I originally said I would do, but I didn't do that because my flesh desired this and so I went and did it. And that's what happens in society too. People that don't have something, what they do, they end up trying to steal it or take it. Uh, they know better. They've been taught better from the youth. They've been told you don't do this, you don't steal. We've had all the commandments given to us in, in every form or fashion, in, in liquid or solid or whatever. It said to us, you know, thou shalt not do this. And our flesh says, but I want to. And I desire to. He says, now I do it. And he said, I, I know that sin really is in me. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, there's no good thing. He knows that we're all born uh, in that division between us and the goodness of God. And we know that we need Jesus to bring that divide back together. We know that in the beginning, uh, when Adam and Eve were in the garden and there was that temptation and they couldn't, they, they knew well, all the good things that God had given them, but what did they do? They gave in to that desire. And we're no different today. We give in to that desire. And so God had to send his son Jesus that we could be reconciled. Not that we would stay in sin, but that we would remove that sin from our lives, that we begin to follow Christ. He talks about the law. He said, you know, we, we need the law to keep us in line. But he said, I need more than that. He said, I need, I need something to separate me from the sin that I want to do. He said, I see another law in my members and I'm wearing against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Every part of our being, every part of our body desires something. You know, when we, um, I've been driving around a few days on, in my red truck without any air conditioner in it because Tammy was gone to, out of town. And, I, and I've learned how to keep myself cool in that because you know your body will say, we've got to figure out something here because because we're getting we're getting hot and I'm a I'm a muscled up guy and I get real hot quick you know I'm kind of as they say I'm well insulated and so I, I've decided I could take my my shirt sleeve and I can hold it right there outside the window and that air will come right through and boy I've, I've got a regular air conditioner going on you know and it's pretty nice until you get a red wasp or something fly right up in there and then you you say oh that's not working too good but the flesh is wanting to be cooled off and wanting to be, and so today when I'm driving uh, the blue truck, it's got awesome air on it. I turn that stuff up. So when we get out of the car somewhere, just our, our glasses just fogged up and, and, uh, and everybody's saying, boy, they have got that turned up. But it's, it's that desire of the flesh. And, and, and I know I'm, I'm guilty because the person beside me is freezing to death, but I'm saying, as long as I'm feeling good, I'm sorry about you, get a coat on or something. But that's the way we are in our lives, aren't we? 
We've been instructed on how we should live. God gave us some instructions from day one. Uh, even whether it's Moses bringing down the tablets and showing to all the people, but they still sinned, didn't they? They still desired their own ways and they desired their own flesh. And, and our society is even more so today that we said, it's about me, it's not about you. And we have to stop and say, but God, it's really about you. It's not about me. Let me somehow put off this old sinful man. He says in verse 24, he says, Oh, wretched, or in one translation, miserable man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because we know the way of sin is death. And he said, who is going to deliver me? Who is going to remove this from me? And then he pauses and he says, Oh, but I thank God that through Jesus Christ, our Lord, so then with the mind that I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There's this divided battle going on all the time, isn't there? There's this battle going on between good and bad. There's always this pull and tug of war that's going on between our flesh and the, and the things that God wants us to do. Um, you know, I, I think as children were growing up, our parents try to teach us in the way that we should live and go. And, and you know the disappointment sometimes we give them. And, uh, you know, all of our children, you know, my children, I can say, hasn't disappointed me a whole lot. Uh, but when they do, it really breaks your heart because you want to feel like you've taught them the path they need to go. And I'm thankful to God every day that my children have listened to some of the things they said. And I'm thankful that they didn't listen to some other things that we said. Amen? Because some of the things we said, we said in jest, and we're glad they didn't remember it. Uh, I remember one time uh, Jennifer went to school, and uh, I was always telling her stories, you know, uh, these stories about the farm and different things and old, old tales. And she went to school one day, and I don't remember the tale it was I told her, but the teacher asked a question. It was kind of like uh, the water boy. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, The Water Boy, where he always says, Mama said this, Mama said that. Well, my daughter was little, and, and the teacher asked a question, and my daughter spoke up and said this answer, whatever it was, and it was way off. I mean, it was something crazy. The teacher said, Who told you that? She said, My daddy, and my daddy don't lie. He told me that's what it is. And so I got a call from the teacher and said, did you tell your daughter, because they mostly knew me, and said, did you tell your daughter this? I said, oh my goodness, did she tell that in school? I said, yeah. I said, well, I guess I'll have to watch what I say from now on. So we have to be careful in our instruction because the little ones are listening. And uh, God knows today that we need uh, correct direction. We need uh, proper instruction. Because the flesh is really willing to do those things that we don't need to do. But by the grace of God, it says we don't have to be a prisoner anymore. It says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so that when my mind myself serve the law of God and then when the flesh of sin. Uh, so today our desire is that not only that we hear the instructions that God gives us, but that we yield to God's way and not the way of sin. Sin says leads to the, the it's a, it's a wide and destructive way it leads to death. But to God is a straight and narrow way. And so whenever we find ourselves questioning, God, which way should I go? My desire is to, to be comforted. My desire is to, to be filled. My desire is to be this. And remember what he says, I will give you all things. I will give you all things. I will not leave you without comfort. I will not leave you without the food that you need in your stomach. I will not leave you without the comfort that you need. He said, I will be with you always. And so when we begin to hear the sin of our the flesh of hauling out for sin, we can say, but God has a better way. And God has a better way for us today. And remember that when you get like it is here, when Paul's talking about Romans, I, I, that our flesh seems to overcome us. Pause just for a moment and say, I thank God through Jesus Christ that I don't have to submit to the sin of my flesh. Thanks be to God. That he gives us an alternative that leads to life eternal. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you again for your word that you've given us. We ask your God that you forgive us of our many sins. We all have failed and fallen short of your glory. But it is by your grace that we're able to come back into the fold. And Lord, you are the great shepherd that leads us through each day. Lord, I just pray as we know the way that Lord, we begin to follow you and not to follow our own desires. I thank you, dear God, for this church and for its people. And I thank you, dear God, for their, their uh, willingness to serve you in whatever way you call. And now, dear God, if there's one here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, 
or someone, Lord, needs to have a closer walk with you, or needs, Lord, help in resisting that which the flesh asks for, I pray, Lord, this might be the day and the hour that we submit ourselves to you and to become a disciple, to follow you wherever you may go. And we'll thank you in the name of Jesus, and amen. Our um, invitational hymn today is number, we're going to do 507. Is that not it? Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, 514. 514. We do invite you today for whatever needs you might have. This altar is always open for you to come and pray. Number 514. Those that are able to stand, we'll sing the first, second, and last verse. Stand up for Jesus. This morning, uh, I forgot to mention that the church that, that I'm going to tonight is uh, where Mark McClaskin's at. You remember Mark? It used to be here, and uh, he always talks highly of you folks. And I said, "Are you talking about Mount Carmel?" And he said, "Yes." And so he really appreciates y'all so much. And I think he said that's one of the first churches he preached that was here. So, so keep Mark in your prayers. Uh, a few years ago, he had a little mild heart attack, kind of scared us, but he's doing really good now. So pray for him. Mark is a really uh, good-hearted, uh, loves the Lord preacher, and I just appreciate him so much. And he's very gullible because he lets me come back a lot, so y'all pray for me. Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, this morning. Always, she does a wonderful job. Anybody have anything else before we dismiss? We are glad to have each of you here this morning. When you miss, we miss you. Next week, you'll have a guest speaker. As I said, I'll be gone. He's a well-renowned speaker from, from right here in your own community and right here in your own body of the church. And I just want to build him up and not say what his name is, Tom, and uh, <laughs> then we'll go from there. But he's going to speak next week, and so uh, y'all be nice and, uh, and, and welcome him as you always welcome us. Uh, you're so gracious, and I appreciate y'all so much. Uh, I do want you to be thinking about something. I don't know um, what the schedule usually is. This church, uh, when's the last time this church had a revival? Do you know? 1822. 1822, okay. Um, be praying about that.
sends that out. They're not getting that good reader email because it's really a good list to frame out. It's always helpful for me to take that and look at that throughout the week and pray for those folks. Our hearts and minds clear. Let's close the prayer. Gracious God, we now go from this place Thank you for so much. Bless us in so many ways. Dear God, let us turn from sin and follow you. And Lord, let us not give in to that which makes us weaker. But Lord, let us give in to that which makes us stronger in you. And we thank you and praise you in the precious and holy name of Jesus. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen.